Alex from Heavy New York. We are back at the altar, and today we are here with Nodar of Fellaheen Fall. It is great to be able to talk with you. Thanks thank, for being here. Thank man. you, Alex. Thank you for having me. I'm like super psyched, super honored to be here. It's, it's you know the honor's all mine, man. It's thank an honor to have one of New York City's own here, and uh, you guys have been killing it lately. I've had the privilege of seeing multiple performances from you guys, and you guys have been killing it every single time. And I gotta say that your uh, last album, Tara Khan was absolutely beautiful, definitely a good soundtrack to the lockdown of uh, 2020. So what can we be expecting from Fellaheen Fall in the future? Are you like making a direct continuation of Tara Khan, or are, we, are you going to surprise us even more and step into more uncharted territory? So truthfully, you know, Tara Khan and even that first EP, the self-title, it's, it's one concept. You know, it follows this character, Tar, right, Tara Khan. It's actually the word for cockroach in, in, in Russian. Yeah, and Tara Khan, and it's it's a projection of, of a character in the future. And, you know, I wanted to write like a concept album. I, I actually never did it initially, but as I started writing, I'm like, I'm, I'm really writing about the same thing, the same themes from the same perspective, not necessarily my own. So I'm not narrating, you know, that, that album or even the, the, the previous CP to it. It's, it's, you know, I started to become this character. So in the future, you're gonna, it's going to be something a little different. Because I'm no longer going to be Tarkan, Khan, or you know, the narrator is no longer Tarkan. Khan. It's a little bit more personal mm -hmm. going forward. You know, the the EP is going to be called Urbana. You know, and I wanted because you know we have a word, and I was like, how do I want? I want to say urban, but like urban doesn't quite, quite. I want like the 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 whole like the urbanity almost. You know, and I, I was looking for a word, and I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to again go with like a like a, a foreign word, use urban, to kind of, to push forward, because the city, you know, it's, it, 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 you know, I live and breathe it, you know, it's inside my veins, I've lived here for, gee, 25 years, and I feel like the urban aspect of the music is, is there, you know, I've said before that I don't want a LARP as like this Viking, woodsy, black man, you know, it's, it's, it wouldn't be true. I can I can do it, and I have no problem with bands. Of course, it's cool when they do it, but it's not it's not Fellaheen Fall, and you know this next EP, the songs that you'll hear on it are gonna be. They're gonna be you know I want to say urban, but you know I don't want I don't want the connotation of what what, what what do you mean by urban? Well, it is gonna be a little it's gonna be more contemporary. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, there it, it the the genre influences are still gonna be gothic metal. It's still going to be doomy, but it's going to be, it's going to be a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Well, what I wanted to ask you actually is because this metaphor and this concept that you address in the first two albums, I find very interesting. Is this like cockroach metaphor in a way? Is this like an external metaphor for something else, whether it be in your personal life or were you kind of like expressing sort of like a made up character outside of your own personal self? So, I mean, of course, it's hard to separate the person, right? So there's always going to be a little bleed through. But, you know, if you've read Kafka's like Metamorphosis, right? And that kind of like, you know, the idea, the idea of transforming into a bug. You know, I felt with Tarkon, I felt a man, I imagined a man in the future, crushed by, 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 losing, his, by losing his humanity, whether it be technological. And specifically in this case, there was a lot of technological advance, a lot of him losing that organic kind of human human existence. It's becoming something new. So I wanted that metamorphosis. That's why I chose the bug, the, the roach. You know, what is what is our bug of the city? You know, it's 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 a it's a roach. It's a you know we go from it goes from crevice to crevice to corner under everything survives. Meanwhile these gargantuan and you know from the roach perspective like these people or the buildings are kind of crushing it or could kill it at any moment. And I wanted to express that existence. That's why you have the, that, that kind of roach, that, that, that um, insect mm -hmm. that marches through. Well, with, to get this full concept, are your albums meant to be listened to chronologically? Are you supposed to listen to the self-titled EP before Tarakan in a way? Like, is it almost kind of like a cinematic movie series where you're not going to get Tarakan unless you listen to the self-titled? In, in a way, in a way, yes, because you do get a, it does kind of, it does kind of show you, you know, some of the songs on the on the self titled EP, Shame and A Fallen Words, they kind of prelude the that 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 transformation, you know, 
the character is Tar Tarkan in this case is is you know he's he's afraid of what's occurring. He's the unknown is is kind of dawning on him. And then you can think of Tarkan as his kind of like exploration. You know, so so if you wanna if you wanna think of the story in its nascency as the subtitle EP, then the the actual story, the the the, the lived experience of his this new kind of transformation would be Tarakan, would be the, the full length. Mm -hmm. Why do you feel that the music that we have of Felahine Fall, because you know, I've compared you guys to My Dying Bride, Catatonia, some typo negative mm -hmm. in there. Um, I've seen some like real gothic elements. I think people even who listen to a band such as His Infernal Majesty mm -hmm. could appreciate you. Why do you feel that the style of music of Felahine Fall was always the best way to sort of demonstrate this story? You know that's that's a good question. It's one of those kind of what comes first, the 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 story or the music, you know, the aesthetic or the or the sound, and it's it's difficult to say why I felt that this style was what what would best kind of um, bring about the story, or maybe it was the story that brought about the sound. Again, it's they they kind of happen at the same time. I write from a very uh, so when I when I write these songs musically. I, I don't write the lyrics first, but I do feel the emotion first. So like I know what this song is without putting words. If if you heard any of our scratch tracks, which you, which you have, but I'll show you them. Mm. They're they're actually mumble tracks. You will hear that I'm I'm saying vowels and consonants. I'm singing them, and but they're not really words. They're mumbles. And you're listening. Like what am I saying? Me, he, she, be. You know, I'm like these e's, these o's, these long ahs. But they're not words. But even though I kind of know that this song is. Maybe the song is longing. You know, all the songs have a bit of longing. They they do. Uh, even the new ones. This is, you know, this is just this is just a piece of me that's going to stay like an artifact of 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 this in the dar the 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 person that's going to remain in the songs. Um, so it's hard to say why you know what what is it about the style that informs. The, the story, or what is it about the story that informs the style? They come together this way. I don't. I've always liked slow music. I've always liked um, dark music. It's just what I grew up on. It's what I feel at home with, and the, the way that I choose to express myself mm -hmm. melodically. Yeah. When it comes to you know using this dark element, though, you know I can tell that you put a lot of your emotion. Again, I saw you play live, and I can tell you get lost when you you know when you perform. And I, the same goes for all of your fellow bandmates. So like. Do you and Raphael and everybody like need to kind of be in the same headspace emotionally when writing the music together, or could maybe you know all of you feeling differently actually help enhance the sound of Philippe Fall? Well, you know, here's the interesting part. So the entire first EP and album I wrote by myself in the in the basement, all the tracks minus the drums because I can't drum, mm -hmm. and I wound up recording them all. At, at the studio, I played the guitar and the bass. I did the vocals. I did the keyboards. Um, my brother Eugene, who you know, who drums for us whenever he can, um, he did the drum work. I basically just woke him up. I was like, Eugene, I need you to come lay down drum tracks for these songs. <laughs> you got about a week to learn them all. Because I wasn't sure. Like I really wasn't sure I was gonna record this album. I wasn't sure that's the way I wanted to go. I'm like, yeah, this is what I'm doing. But then I'm like, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna put this on on. on on tape, but I can put this in the hard drive, you know, because we don't record on tape anymore. But um, and and then you know I found Patrick, the lead guitar player, Patrick Riley, and you know he liked the sound right away, and I'm like I need additional leads, especially solos. So if you hear the solo of that night and the solo of Fallen Words, he came in and he you know he he really needs to feel the music, so he needs to get into it, and you can almost tell by his solos they are very. Uh, he's an emotional player. He needs to feel it. He will not. If he doesn't feel your music is not, he's not gonna play it. Like, like you can almost tell. Like he needs to like it, and then well, you know, he's a professional. He'll play anything you ask yeah. him to. But you know, when you hear that that minutia, you know what makes that bend just right. It's he has to feel it. He's one of those players who, you know, he'll sit down and he'll play truly from the heart. Not what you know. It's supposed. You know, anyone was gonna sit down and write a solo and say like, okay, this was gonna this was gonna make sense melodically. It'll sound good. I can write a million songs that sound good. But can I write one that sounds right? 
Patrick has that ability because he feeds into the emotion of the song. There's a difference between sounding good and sounding right. And I'd imagine, too, because, you know, uh, Patrick played with Tinker Calvary yes. and, you know, uh, Raphael played with Finnamore. Yes. So, like, I feel like your band almost is almost like a doom super group in a way where I feel like maybe all of you bring individual talents that uh, really enhance the sound of Fellaheen Fall. Right? Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, when Finnamore broke up, I was like, what am I doing? Because I was playing keyboards, obviously, for, for uh, Finnamore. And I was like, um, I was like, Raphael, I'm like, I'm working on some songs and I'm thinking about recording them. Do you want to play, you know, guitar for this other band? Um, you know, which I, at that point, it was actually Fellaheen West. It was actually the original name, not Fellaheen Fall. Yeah, because, you know, Fellaheen were, were these kind of destitute farmers in, the, in, in uh, North Africa and the Middle East, right? Yeah. And... I was just like, you know, I kind of feel like, like this destitute, like, in a similar sense, but in, in, in the West, you know, existing in New York, this kind of like aimless existence crushed by the, crushed by the city, which I'm sure all of us feel every so often, you know, you walk out and sometimes the grandiosity of this place can yeah. wash you away. And that's how I felt. I'm just like, I'm this like, this insignificant person who exists in the center of the world, you know, New York City. And, and I'm like, so Fellaheen West was actually the original name and I'm like no 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 I want to signify you know the the autumn the you know the you know philosophically speaking the autumn of, of civilization here we are you know and that's how that's how the name came about so you know I brought in Raphael from Finnamore and then Patrick from you know he heard the stuff he loved it right away so I, I do feel I do have like very experienced and very like-minded musician in the collective and, yeah, and all super active in the scene and supportive. And being that you played keyboards in Finnamore, I, I, I'm not sure, I can't remember if I met you at the show or not, but the first time I saw Finnamore was with Dark Tranquility uh, at Gramercy Theater in 2017 or 2016 or something like that. I think Swallow the Sun was on the bill. And yeah, yeah like that was, I can't believe that was so long ago. But uh, I know. but uh, I don't, were you uh, like, um, I wasn't sure if um, we met at that show or not, but is there a similar way that you portray yourself as a singer versus a keyboard player? Uh, well, we, did, we didn't meet at that show, unfortunately. Uh, I wish we did, but no, we didn't. Uh, but it's a huge, huge um, difference. So I always felt a little bit, um, I always felt a little bit constrained on the keyboard. You know, I, I, when I'm on the stage, I need to, as you, as you can say, I need to get into it. I need to really feel the energy of the song. And, when you're playing keyboards, you know, it's a very, you, you, you know yourself, it's a very delicate instrument. If you start jumping and swaying and headbanging, you're going to start making mistakes. And while some mistakes, mistakes are okay when you're in it, after a while, you start making so many mistakes that, you know, no one's enjoying it, you know? And um, the difference is, is in, in that aspect, it's there, but also it's much more personal to be the vocalist, you know? Yes, every single member is important when you play on stage, but you take on a, I don't want to say a different responsibility, but it's a different, you're exposed at a different level. Yeah. But I'd imagine that the melody and the emotion that's channeled in, because the keyboards have their own sense of melody, that maybe that melodic background in a way may help how you express your voice too, right? Well, um, yeah, for sure. I mean, all the vocal melodies are written on the keyboard first. So I'll sit down, uh, the way, all the way all feeling like fall songs start, start are on the keyboard. I sit down and I'll just start playing chord progressions. It can be the same ones I played a million times, but something about today made this chord progression sound a little different. Maybe I'm playing it a little faster, maybe a little slower. Maybe it's somewhat syncopated. You know, we're all using the same eight notes in the Western scales, right? The same, you know, the same chords are being, you hear them all the time. I can, I can run a medley of pop songs and metal songs using the same chord progressions, you know what I mean? Yeah, the greatest hits in the last like 40 years will use the same four chords. Same chord. four chords, but it's, it's, even true, it's even true in metal. You know what I mean? It's really the same set of chords. Why is it that one song sounds different? Yeah, it's instrument, instrumentation, arrangement, but something in that moment, this same three chord, four chord, one chord progression, kind of melodic intro will, will capture it. So every single, so yes, you're 100% right. The keyboard does inform, especially in Final Heat Fall, the vocals, of course. It would not exist without that. And uh, I have two more questions for you. One is, uh, you know, uh, going back to your live show, as somebody who has seen you play live before, 
you know, I could tell that you get very much lost into it. But when you're like in the studio or you're practicing, you know, there's probably got to be a little bit more focus involved to execute the song, right? So would you say that the studio version of you is a very different energy than the live version of you? Or does the same method behind the madness apply to everything? It's actually very different. So in the studio, I'm much more anxious in the studio because in the studio, it's like we have to nail the right take, you know, and that... That creates a completely different atmosphere when you go into that booth or into that vocal room. Because, you know, I'm on stage, I want to give the best performance possible, yes, but also I can't control the fact that I'm into the music so much, that it's swaying me, it's moving me. Sometimes, you know, I get angry at on stage because maybe the lyrics are, are meaning something else to me at that moment. You know, because remember, all these songs are fluid. The way you sing that one line, the way you hear that one line, it's gonna affect you differently every day. You know, you know, what do you mean when you say this? You know, like, even the word this. This can mean, you know, um, can mean like the area, can mean the way you feel or whatnot. And that expression, can you capture that same expression in the, in the booth? It's, it's different because, again, the anxiety is rising. I'm like, I have to actually perform well because, well, you know, I'm going to put this on, the, on an album and then I'm here for the rest of my life. But yeah. that's a different level of anxiety. Yeah, I mean, you know, with the performance, you want to execute it too, but like, if, God forbid, you make a mistake when you're playing live, there's nothing you can do about it. Like, there's no turning back with it, so you might as well just, you know, move on and we'll keep going. There's, but, you know, you make a mistake in the recording, you can keep going back and going back and being faced with the same mistake over, and that's got to be uh, tormenting in a way. Yeah, there, of course, you know, no album is perfect. And there are times when I'm listening to some of these songs, and I'm like, oh, I wish I didn't do that. Well, oh, I wish I, you know, that I can change this, you know, but at some point, like with any creative process, I mean, you know, you're obviously as a creative know this, you know, I doubt you've ever painted something that's perfect. I'm sure you look at your thing, your, your, your work and you're like, ah, oh, you know what, this could be, I can change this, I can change that, but then you will oh, be changed through plenty of canvases in my day. Yes. Forever, you will be changing forever. And that's something I think the years of, work, of being in Fenimore and now with Fellaheen Fall is that at some point, you have to be able to say stop. Yeah, you have to be. Able it's to say the stop. biggest week, and it's the, like almost the most complicated thing. But I think knowing when to stop is one of the greatest disciplines you could have as an artist. Oh yeah, and that's without a doubt. Sometimes you know, you hear that you can actually, and you, actually, you know, you, you mentioned punching through a canvas. Well, you can do the same thing, you know, metaphorically with the song. You'll change it so much that it's it's atrocious yeah. and beyond repair, and it, you've ruined it. Don't punch through a mixer. That's way more expensive than a canvas. But, uh, yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. And the final question I wanted to ask you is, you actually kind of led me in very perfectly in the beginning, because I heard you mention the word urban quite a few times, and that's how I describe uh, Phil and Fall, as well as, you know, like our mutual friends and like Nefarian or After Us. I call you guys Urban Doom. That's the style I call you guys. So, and what I find unique is, you know, I've talked with bands extensively about the New York City scene, you know, the hard history of the hardcore scene, the death metal scene, and all that. For you, though, like, it almost seems like the city itself, whether there was a huge scene here or no scene here, it did, I could tell that the city living here influences you as well. But, you know, being so active in the scene and stuff like that, you know, years with Finnamore and now with Philaheen Fall, and, you know, all of you bringing individual talents and dedicated, I always see at least one Philaheen Fall member at any show or any industry event I go to. So, uh, the, does the scene itself also serve as a source of inspiration? Well, yes, of course. You know, the people that you meet in the scene, such as yourself, you know, it's, they, 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 have, an, they have an effect on you. You know, every conversation is, is, important and, you know, uh, gratifying, regardless of, of what the, the substance may be, it's, it lives and breathes, and I told you this, you know, the other week, um, it, the scene lives and breathes through the people that are in it, they help inform each other, they push each other along, they, um, you know, without the scene, it, it, it's important, yes, the city does inform, but the scene does as well. Yeah, of course. I, and I and again, I think it's awesome that you bring that like sort of urban aspect into your uh, style as well. And like, uh, I feel like you almost demonstrate the both the excitement, but also the rather macabre nature that uh, you that is present in the city. Like a lot of people, like we've seen, like in black metal, they describe like the isolation and the dreariness and like the forests or whatever. We may not have forests here, but we have concrete. We're a concrete jungle, and there's plenty of like that dismal aspect behind it as well. 
Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, a lot of that, you know, actually it's funny, while musically or sonically black metal doesn't influence the band, I feel there's that aesthetic continuum you know, you, um, let's say Imperial Triumphant, right? They're also very much informed by the city. You know, this, New York is, it's, living here, it's, it can be so overwhelming. You know, it can be so crushing. You know, it can crush your dreams and crush your hopes, but it can give you them. It can give you, you know, one avenue is blocked off, another one opens up. The city is truly something, and as long as Fallon King Falk keeps writing music, the city will inform that music. That's a beautiful quote. That great way to end this conversation. <laughs> so before we go, I want to thank you so much for your time for such an awesome conversation. Thank you, Alex. Thank Just you, uh, what else could we be expecting from Fellaheen Fall in the future, if you're allowed to say, of course. Of course. So we do have this EP coming out, uh, Urbanum. It should be, you know, I don't want to give a date, but it's definitely going to be this year. Uh, we have a couple of music videos already. We have one, another one filming uh, within a few weeks. And, uh, you know, we are super excited for it. Again, it's going to be, it, it'll, it'll be familiar, but it will be different. Familiar yet fresh. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Everybody, Philippine Fall, new stuff coming very soon. This is Alex from Heavy New York, and we will see you next time.